Uh, welcome to a new video and in this video we want to compare the Sony Xperia 10 Mark II against the Huawei P30 that lately dropped in price that makes it very interesting for people who want to check out maybe the Huawei device because it's a flagship device from last year and it is in the same price range around 400 euros or dollars when it comes to uh, yeah, smartphones. So a mid-ranger against a flagship. This is not the first video I showed you last time. A mid-ranger against a flagship device from two years, the LG G7, where the mid-ranger, the Sony Xperia 10 Mark II, was fairly good in comparison to the flagship device. And now against a flagship from last year. Let's get started. So let's take a look at these two devices. On the left you have the Huawei P30 and a case, the official Huawei case. And on the right we have the Sony Xperia 10 Mark II without a case, as you can see here in its glass back glory. The Huawei device, however, underneath the case hides also a glass back. And you can see they have a familiar, similar, similar color, a bit lighter on the Huawei device than on the Xperia. Both glass, front and back, Gorilla Glass, without a doubt. And you can see the difference here, 6.1 inch against 6 inch. You can see the display size almost the same. The only difference is the Huawei has a different aspect ratio, as you can see. And from the, from the width, you can see that it's almost the same. So I can really not see much of a difference when it comes to those both devices here. Pretty nice devices. Let's put the Huawei one in back into the case, otherwise I will lose the case. And uh, let's start with the physical differences. Are they physical differences? So both of them feature um, triple lens setup. The Huawei one has a 40 megapixel. Uh, lens and I think a 16 megapixel and an 8 megapixel shooter tele and ultra wide. The ultra wide is 16 megapixel, and uh, the Sony we know already 12 megapixels in the middle, uh, surrounded by two 8 megapixel sensors, one for wide, super wide angle, and tele. Uh, two times both of them uh, have tele, but the Huawei one has a three times tele, and uh, the the Sony one only two times. Yeah, um, when it comes to the top, you can see the Xperia has a 3.5 millimeters headphone jack, and on the top here, you only have an infrared sensor, uh, and we have the headphone jack on the bottom. We have a single mono speaker on the uh, Huawei and USB Type C 3.1 as well. And here we have the USB Type-C 2.0 and we have a front firing speaker here in the Xperia 10 Mark II. Both have uh, front cameras. Of course, Sony does not use any notches here. They just have a normal uh, old classic design. And Huawei has a notch in here with the speaker above the camera. And here we have the camera right next to the to the speaker. So um, both devices have a fingerprint scanner, and here I can really show you the fingerprint scanner because uh, we have a display in display fingerprint scanner on the Huawei, and we have the side mounted fingerprint scanner on the Sony. So let's see which one is faster. I think the Huawei was a bit faster. Let's try this again. And yes, again, so maybe it's only display on time, which is a bit faster on the Huawei, but you can see clearly that the Huawei is faster when it comes to unlocking a bit, always a bit faster. Uh, the displays are both AMOLED displays, gorgeous AMOLED displays, I would say. Even the P30 has a good AMOLED display uh, with good whites and good blacks. And both of them feature the same resolution, but the one here on the Xperia is a bit stretched, but when it comes to sharpness, 
there's not much of a difference that you can tell from both of those two devices. As you can see, both of them are very sharp and provide vivid colors. Then uh, both have only a mono speaker, so the sound quality on both of them is um, not the best, but I would clearly say the uh, Huawei has an edge when it comes to bass and overall clarity, where this lags dramatically on the Xperia 10 Mark II. When it comes to cameras, we will take a look at the camera performance just in a second. I will do some uh, videos and uh, also some camera shots um, of yeah something around here and uh, yeah this is it for the tour i think uh, what can you say uh, yeah, there's nothing else to see uh, i think maybe buttons they have a similar layout in buttons you can see there's a power button on both of them the Huawei one's a big I think than the uh, Sony and both of them have also uh, volume control here you can see the volume control and the power button and here on the Sony as well power button and volume control so I think we should go now and take a look at the photos that you can shoot with both of them Let's take a look at the photos. Let's start first with the P30 on the left and the Sony on the right. And this is my setup that I used for filming the differences between the two phones. You can see I have a small tripod here and uh, my Mate XS as my main video cam. So the differences that you can see when comparing those two images directly is that the P30 has a brighter image and the Sony, the Xperia, a more darker and also cooler image. When you take a look at the back, for example, here was more into more red and here it is more like into a darker color. And the other difference that you can clearly see is we have a bokeh which is we are clearly distinguishable on the p30 because it simply has a bigger sensor even if it only shoots about i think what is it here 10 megapixel images of the 30 megapixel sensor by default the 40 megapixel sensor is so much bigger in size and you can clearly see this which allows for background separation so as you can see here the bokeh uh, looks pretty fine. That does not mean that the Sony doesn't have any background separation but it is clearly in direct comparison to the P40, uh, P30 it is completely different as you can see here it is not as pronounced uh, as here. Also what you see is it is darker also because of the smaller sensor we have more megapixels we have 12 megapixels on a smaller sensor and here we have technically 40 but it is downsampled taking four pixels together binding them together so it is uh, 10 megapixels so in theory then we have um, larger pixel size which uh, let us capture more light and yeah this is the basic difference that you can see between those images but also regarding other images as well Dynamic range is a big difference here as well. You can see that the Sony struggles a little bit with the details when it comes to the trees and we have a fully good exposed and good dynamic range on the uh, Huawei P30 here and what the Sony does good is preserving the highlights in the clouds. So you can see we have bluish clouds here. We can see clearly behind the cloud this the blue sky. This is what I meant. And here, mm, hard to see. And uh, yeah, the, the openings in the cloud, there are openings in the cloud, but they are like not blue, not blue enough at least. But when it comes to details in the trees here, for example, it is like a night and day difference. There's uh, almost nothing to see uh, in the Sony one. It's too dark. 
and uh, when it comes to the tower clock tower itself we can see the clock we can read the clock without any issue here and when it comes to exposure you can see it is also a bit darker more contrasty on the sony and a bit yeah more uh, a bit lighter and more clearer on the huawei and then of course we have zoom lenses and we have uh, different zoom lenses as you can see here we have a three times zoom lens on the p30 so we have the option if you go 100 percent here wow <laughs> you can li literally see the clock of the clock tower and here two times the zoom of the sony it's not looking as good and you can see here there's a lot of sharpening applied i'm not sure what the sony is using here if it is really using its zoom lens or just cropping into the 12 megapixel sensor but for the quality i think and this is always a problem the same problem i have with the huawei um, it's not always using the zoom lens but in this case there was enough light for it to use the zoom lens because this is clearly uh, the three times optical zoom and here on the sony a uh, lot of sharpening going on as you can see here uh, yeah in direct comparison this looks like a more natural shot and this looks like a more over sharpened shot then we have the ultra wide angle shot which looks like this again a difference in exposure because the sensor is a lot bigger on the ex uh, on the on the um, uh, Huawei P30 and on the Xperia device we have a smaller sensor and a smaller aperture and this combination yeah makes it really really underexposed of course I have the option to see this the, the clock tower again here and uh, you can see clear winner again the uh, Huawei also in general high dynamic range i think uh, done better by the huawei and sony not so much then we have also nice interesting uh, the huawei offers a hybrid to zoom five times which i used here again on the clock tower and you can see it is software if you really look at it but it's really really good for five times zoom and the Sony is not so bad either. It is using digital zoom then. I think it is using then the digital zoom on the cropped, uh, on, on the, uh, it's cropping into the zoom sensor this time. Uh, it is still digitally enhanced as you can see here, but in this view, I think besides it's being a bit darker, both are pretty fine. You can see here it is getting a bit soft, but this is like the natural softness and here it's over sharpened if you zoom in it looks mm, not so much it looks like a painting which is not what i want and uh, but both shots are usable i would say uh, just edit this shot of the sony made uh, make it a bit uh, brighter and then it is definitely usable the next shot yeah this is like an iron guard <laughs> uh, on the university campus uh, of auckland apparently um, what you see here is a difference in contrast the huawei has more contrast as you can see clearly uh, around here the shadow areas are a lot darker than here of the sony the sony is like a bit well, grayish grayish brown um, and this is like really dark black uh, s uh, blacks are also visible here and you can see here the difference also in resolution 12 against 10 megapixels and yeah in general i think both did a good job here uh, so I think that uh, either it is because of the, 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 the darks here, it looks like the Huawei has the clearer shot, might be even uh, better in focusing here, and it looks like a bit wish washed out on the Sony. But I think both shots are pretty fine uh, under these conditions. And I think even the contrast is a bit too high on the Huawei one, especially when I look at the car here in the back and here at the car uh, at the back. And uh, here you can see a bit more detail in the background, but this is really pixel peeping. But again, looking at the tree, for example, uh, this looks me a bit too much contrast. And the Sony one has the more natural colors here and you can see also i think the tree there's a lot of sharpening going on on the tree as well which the sony does not do here in this case 
So you decide what you like um, better. So then the next shot in a library, university library, and here somehow a general problem that I see with the Sony, sometimes you miss focus, uh, especially if you don't tap to focus on you what you want to focus, you have this issue. The other issue you can see clearly, not issue, but the other difference you can see clearly is the um, white balance or color signs. Uh, this green here and this green is a different green. and. Here it is like overblown even, so you can see not much details in the glass itself. Here in the front you can see a bit through the glass and you can see a, bit a few scratches here as well on the glass. Uh, but uh, yeah, it is slightly out of focus. It, it feels like it's missing a bit of this uh, nailing the shot. On the Huawei on the other side, this looks okay. Uh, you can even see the details, like the scratches here on the on the glass or plastic or whatever it is. And uh, you can detect all the LEDs here. Here it is um, a bit washed out, more washed out. So you can see here those LEDs are like overblowing stuff. Here it is not so much. So yeah, there is clearly a difference in both pictures as well. Next shot, it's getting a bit darker already and we can see this building here near the clock tower and uh, it's astonishing. Here you can see the difference also again. The darker it gets, the more difference you can see when it comes to sensor size, pixel size on the sensors and that the Sony struggles in darker conditions clearly. But I have to say that um, even though the mm, Huawei has the, the, the more accurate shot because this is actually what I saw. The Sony has a more dramatic <laughs> feel to it because it is creating this, this light, uh, making it more dramatic. Uh, by, by and here it looks like he, he can clearly see the difference. There's sharpening going on definitely on the Huawei and it doesn't look as dramatic and uh, on the Huawei as it looks on the Sony, that's for sure. But yeah, that's science. Then we have night shot on both. Here you can see the difference in night shots and you can see clearly again a brighter image on the Huawei. You can clearly see the clock tower, you can tell the time. You can do the same on the Sony as well. There's no big issue when it comes to this. Uh, uh, both in, in their respective night mode shot in their respective night mode. So the uh, Huawei one has a very good night mode uh, with very dramatic effects as well. Uh, in this case it looks a bit like artificial I have to say and the Sony looks a bit more mm, natural. Um, so uh, I can show you later on a night mode shot, uh, I think it's the last image, where you can see dramatically difference. Huawei is basically, it's possible to turn the night into day and on the Sony this is not the case but I think both have a good shot and if you take a look at the lamp here for example uh, there's besides having to struggle with the uh, noisier image in general and noise reduction kicking in on the Sony uh, I think it is uh, both uh, are very good when it comes to nailing the shot here and both images are usable I would say and maybe the uh, Sony one looks a bit more dramatic even though it is uh, slightly too dark I would say. It's this It wasn't that dark when I was uh, running around there. Then another thing, the moonshot. <laughs> I had to do the moonshot uh, when I saw the moon and here you can see also a difference in uh, how they handle colors. You know, first of all we see we have the the, the the blue sky again and we have the clouds here and we see the moon as almost yeah you can see here the moon as a spot basically and here on the Huawei one maybe also because the uh, maybe the the clouds were getting into this but it is mixed into with the clouds and um, yeah we don't have so much blue in the sky and uh, this is interesting because I think both fail. <laughs> to represent what I was seeing. So it wasn't that blue uh, like the Sony is showing it and it wasn't that white as the uh, Huawei is showing it. So it was something in between. Um, next shot is the closest distance I could get to the moon with the Sony and now uh, with the Huawei and this looks like I've used a telescope or something like this. 
but no it's 30 times zoom with the Huawei and the Huawei has a um, moonshot feature so then AI detects okay you are now um, pointing to the moon and it then darkens the rest of and you don't see anything uh, of the trees or something like this darkens the rest and it looks like an uh, uh, telescope like shot you, where you can see okay if I go to 100% it looks totally garbage but at least in this uh, view you can clearly see something oh that's the moon and here yeah it could could be even the sun <laughs> to be honest so it's not uh, but you can if you compare it with this one it's night and day and um, it's a white or yellowish spot and that's it I try to turn down manually then the exposure as well but the best shot I could get is like this shot and you can clearly see mm, mm, also not as awesome as uh, the Huawei one so <laughs> if you want to shoot the moon yeah the Huawei one is clearly the winner here and then a true night shot and here you can see the difference um, like I said Huawei is basically it's possible to 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 um, turn the night into day and uh, the Sony has no chance against the Huawei in general I think this is also the conclusion uh, the Sony has absolutely no <laughs> chance against the Huawei the only thing that I saw is in selfies you will see this right now I will talk maybe a bit nonsense uh, to you because what I saw with the selfie video at least is that it was quite soft and it was not nailing the focus as good I think or it was or it was just soft and trying to compensate the, the smaller uh, the, the more pixel uh, on so smaller pixels on this small uh, 32 megapixel sensor um, against the Sony but look for yourself I think the next the selfie sh shot I think the Sony has an advantage in low-light selfie video hmm. so this is now a test with the Sony Xperia 10 Mark II and the front-facing camera 8 megapixels and when I move around you can see it has no optical image stabilization it is totally based upon the electronic image stabilization so if I move around I think it is pretty good because I'm having it here on a, a mini uh, tripod no on a mini selfie stick and I have the option to just walk around hold it a bit away from me and you can see I'm always in focus because it's a all in focus or fixed focus lens so everything that is like uh, maybe this far away from the lens until infinity will be in focus and uh, yeah I think it is a good selfie vlogging uh, kind of camera uh, it exposes nicely on your face but in the mid-range section of smartphones you will find something that is definitely better than uh, this year and uh, let's compare it to the flagship from last year the Huawei P30 and you can see a major difference so now same scene recorded same microphone by the way recorded with the Huawei P30 and you can see a slight difference I would say it has a 32 megapixel sensor on the front facing side it is also not optically stabilized but they have a very good electronic image stabilization so if I move around here and you can see maybe more about my background you can also see the background is a bit more blurry that is yeah due to the sensor size being bigger in this case and I think the colors look a bit nicer here as well but you can tweak of course the colors on the Huawei phones because they're using Leica colors and you can choose whatever you like to have you have more soft look uh, the standard look the default look or something else you can choose in between and I see the moon I'm not sure how the dynamic range is of this here ah, the moon I think with the uh, Xperia 10 Mark II you also saw that the dynamic range especially in the background here where you can see sun is going down slowly uh, you didn't really see it it was a bit overblown but on this you can pretty much see it and I think the front-facing camera there is no uh, uh, nothing to complain about the Huawei P30 beats the Sony in every aspect when it comes to front-facing uh, camera selfies or video doesn't really matter 
So now the back facing camera. This one can shoot up to 4K 30 frames per second and this is the main shooter. The cool thing is I could, I can zoom in and yeah I think I will do. Um, just turning around and show you, showing you the uh, things here. I have the option to zoom in. Here you can see uh, the university tower, clock tower and I can zoom in here digitally without any problems. It's switching to the uh, three times zoom lens. I'm now zoomed in four times and you can see it's working pretty nice and also can zoom out one time and now I can go into wide angle and as you can see here nice stabilize and nice dynamic range as well. And now with the default Sony applications uh, application. I don't have external microphone support there, but you can see dynamic range is worse. I can zoom in two times and I can even zoom in a bit more. I can see it's pretty dark. This is now 4.5 times the same as in the Huawei. And I also have the option to zoom out as well. This is one time and now we are in ultra wide angle. But you can see a clearly difference in terms of dynamic range because yeah it simply has the smaller sensors this Sony device which is not so capable when it comes to dynamic range and also the software I think uh, needs maybe a bit of optimization and you can s clearly see the difference between a flagship and a mid-ranger. So now we have the two devices uh, here at home and I want to show you the speed comparison uh, this device has a Kirin 990, the Huawei P30, uh, 980, Huawei P30. So it has a flagship device processor and uh, the 665 Snapdragon of the of the Sony Xperia 10 Mark II should not ch uh, stand any chance when it comes to this in benchmarks or also yeah in usage. But we will find out. So first of all, we want to uh, have no apps open I think on both. We want to open up the uh, app store, play store in this case, one, two, three. And you can see clearly the winner, the Huawei device. Let's turn off the auto rotate because the Sony has problems with rotation. And as you can see there's a Play Store available on the P30 for those of you who are uh, struggling maybe with this. P30 has still Google Play services. F-Droid, one, two, three. And again, the Huawei device a bit faster. Uh, then we want to start a browser like Firefox Preview, for example. One, two, three. And I think pretty much on par. So both of them opened up at the same time I would say. Then the next thing that we want to open is something simple just like Google. One, two, three. And also I think almost on par, maybe slightly ahead, but you saw it had uh, some problems, issues with uh, loading some images still. So the next thing that we want to start is some, um, some game. Where do you have games? They have games. And here, where do I have games? I have games here. So Traffic Rider, one, two, three. So they both started, but clearly you saw Traffic Rider first in loading the stuff. The game itself, now when it comes to the racing tracks, let's go to the first one here load both the same track one two three and again the p30 a bit quicker when it comes to loading games 
When it comes to memory management, there should be no problem with this. Both have enough memory, 4 gigabytes of memory on the Xperia 10 Mark II. Still enough to keep those apps uh, running in the background here. Ah, we saw a reload, so probably not. Last time I checked it, there was no reload. Huh? But most of the other apps should be in memory. Yes, even though it did not capture the preview. And even the games, yeah, are paused. So in terms of memory, there we can see also clearly a winner, the P30. So overall, I would say the Xperia 10 Mark II lost this round and you can see clearly a difference with the P30. Camera performance is, Huawei has flagship cameras. Even for this year, the, I would say it is still flagship uh, level. And uh, yeah, Sony cannot compete with this, sadly. Uh, when it comes to performance, we have the clearly edge again. It is a flagship against a mid-ranger and you can clearly see the difference why you maybe spend a bit of more bucks for the P30. So they are a lot closer together. And uh, yeah, what you would get from the Sony is not much. There is not much benefit in comparison to the P30. If you compare it to a P30 Pro, then you will get the headphone jack definitely, but the P30 still has a headphone jack. So I would say if you are in the market and search for something, look also for the P30 uh, because it is a good deal, a good price, and it is better than the Xperia 10 Mark II for roughly the same price point. That's everything for this video. I hope it, you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, and until the next time. Bye.